Welcome to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m., the Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. It is Wednesday, February 9th, 2022, and we are live. Call in numbers 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment, 313-778-7600. Is the call in number if you have a question or comment. Well, it's been a very busy day today. Some of you all saw the interview that I did with three African American professional women at um, right around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today. I interviewed Dr. Jacqueline Sherman, who's a licensed clinical psychologist and certified intimacy and relationship coach. I also interviewed Khadija Tashan who's a licensed therapist and Kenya K. Stevens of the Progressive Love Academy. And she's a relationship expert among other, among other things. And we talked about uh, AJ Johnson and the conversation she had back on February 1st about the threesome that she had at 50 years old when she was 50 years old. But some of the negative comments that she received and some of the negative comments that were, uh, posted on social media, especially from men. So you can watch that. You can watch that conversation on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I M H O T E P. It was a really, really good discussion. And we dealt with a lot of uh, stereotypes and a lot of how we're taught to see. Uh, we're taught to see our sexuality oftentimes through the prism of white supreme white, white supremacy and racism. Okay, so I had to do that interview today. And then also part of my day I was dispelling nonsense just floating around on social media. And uh I saw it um I saw it last night, some of it last night. And then more of it this morning. And th this is an example of what happens. You just run with stories on social media. Don't do no damn research. You, you, you're citing uh, sources that are not good sources for uh, politics. Especially when you go and cite the Washington Free Beacon. OK, and which is a right wing publication, the Washington Free Beacon. So. I posted this today, this day, and I was talking to people on social media uh, uh, today as well. And I, I think at some point, some people are going to realize that they've been lied to. And um, I, I saw also some of these. Uh, social media platforms, these forms that dabble in politics. I saw they had to take stories down because blatantly false. So this story here this morning from um, early this morning from news1.com is one that got it pretty right. Um, no, no, the Biden administration is not giving black people crack pipes and calling it racial equality. Now, the fact that you had dumb asses just run with this BS and just put, don't do research. And then what's going to happen is some of the videos that they put out citing these incorrect sources, when they go back and check, they're going to find that those incorrect stories that they cited are taken down because they were false. So we're going to talk about this. Roland Martin dealt with this today on Roland Martin Unfiltered. I already said I was going to address it some. Uh, at, you know, I, 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 uh, Lavanya Perriman and I were Facebook friends and we're friends. I've been on her show before a few times. She was going to talk about this story today, but she had some incorrect information. I sent her this article. And I got her the correct information to change the, tra the trajectory of her 4 p.m. show today. 
And as the day went on, more and more information came out proving that these false stories floating around were wrong. Now, Fox News has been having a field day just putting out a bunch of misinformation. This is what Fox News does, but it's even more so today. A bunch of misinformation. And Fox and Fox News was interviewing uh, uh, Senator uh, John Kennedy of Louisiana, dumbass John Kennedy of Louisiana. Um, and they, they uh, Marco Rubio of Florida put out comments on this. All these Republicans have been commenting. Now, in some of their states, in some of their states, they have um, harm reduction programs in some of their states, but they don't want to talk about that. Like in Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis back in um, Governor Ron DeSantis back in 2019, I think it was. And we're going to go to clip one here when we come back from the break, Shakita. Governor Ron DeSantis signed this bill in the law, June of 2019. This right here. So I, I just found a whole lot of hypocrisy coming from Republicans. But no. They're not giving out. They're not going to be giving out crack pipes. Now, some people may want them to give out crack pipes, which explains your stupid ass thinking. And this nonsense you putting out, maybe you high on crack. Maybe that's why you want crack pipes given. That will explain a whole lot. Governor Ron DeSantis signs legislation authorizing needle exchange programs in Florida. This is from June 27, 2019. And this is to reduce people uh getting uh injecting themselves with contaminated needles and getting uh hiv through contaminated needles all different types of things like this governor ron DeSantis signed a bill late wednesday night that would allow residents across floor access to syringe exchange exchange programs the infectious disease elimination program uh programs bill was approved across bipartisan lines allowing counties the opportunity to authorize needle exchange services locally, allowing counties the opportunity to authorize needle exchange services locally. According to a news release from the Drug Policy Alliance, the programs are modeled after IDEA exchange in Miami, in Miami Florida, a similar program that was authorized in 2016 and has since seen success. So read this here, because Marco Rubio, was uh, complaining today about the uh, harm reduction program grants as if this don't exist in his backyard to save lives. But once again, they're not giving out crack pipes, but some people, based upon the information they put out, maybe they were high on crack when they put it out. Maybe that's why they, maybe that's why they want to hallucinate free crack pipe, free crack pipes. I don't know. I don't do drugs, so you, you have to talk to somebody that dabbles in that. I don't I don't do drugs. Um, the Miami Herald had a really, really important piece that we're going to get to uh, on the other side of this break. This uh, Fox News brought this up at the White House press uh, press briefing today. Jen Psaki handled it like a pro. And explain how this information was false being handed out. But when I see, you know, I know I consume more media than most people. I monitor about 35 different news sources on a daily basis. But when I see people just recycling, just simple Simon ass nonsense, I'm like, oh, my God. No, Biden administration is not giving out crack pipes. What's really happening this is a really good article from the Miami Herald this evening that goes through step by step and breaks this down. This is what we're going to do on the other side of the break because we actually deal with real substance here on this show. You listen to the After History Network show on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Soul in Motion, celebrating 38 years in the arts. This energetic ensemble of dancers and drummers was started by percussionist Michael Friend and is led by choreographer, associate director Pam Lassiter. Based in the Washington, D.C. area, Soul in Motion is now accepting bookings for Black History Month, Juneteenth, and summer festivals in 2022. Soul in Motion is also available for more intimate events like naming ceremonies and weddings. To 
find out more or book your date, call 240-452-1349 or send an email to info at soulinmotion.org. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Soul in Motion, celebrating our history, our culture, our future. Soul in Motion, theater, African dance, and drumming since 1984. Mental health and well-being have long been a taboo subject in the so-called African-American community. So I enlisted the help of mental health experts, thought leaders, and activists to help kill the ghost of Willie Lynch and heal from post-traumatic slave syndrome. We experience trauma a lot of times um, on a subconscious level. So sometimes something happens to us and we know that it's traumatizing, but we don't really recognize the extent of the trauma. Many people confuse what racism is. Racism is a power structure. It was laws and policies that put us in this predicament. It's going to be laws and policies that take us out. So when you control the radius of a man or woman's thoughts, you can control the compass of his or her actions because the mind can't do a piece of it doesn't know. We have it all on 910 AM Superstation. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 910 AM Superstation, the future radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Wednesday, February 9th, 2022. It's been a very busy day because I, I was um, on the air. I had to do an interview from about 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, today. So go watch that uh, Black Women Speak. Uh, we talked about A.J. Johnson, uh, the threesome that she had with two men when she was 50 years old. Um, it's like nine years ago when she turned 50. AJ Johnson from um we've seen her in Baby Boy and uh seen her in um uh House Party. Okay. So we talked about this uh earlier today, uh 8 p.m. And it's on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, the African History Network, and our YouTube channel, uh Michael M. Hotep, I M H O T E P. All right, so go check that out. Then we've got a picture of A.J. Uh, Johnson up here. So she set the Internet on fire. And we had a really good discussion with three intelligent African-American women, uh, clinical psychologists and uh, relationships experts and things like that. OK. So uh, we're going to go to clip one here in just a second, Shakita. Um, and we're also going to talk about Jim Jones and Jim Jones claiming he was racially profiled at Gucci. I posted about that earlier today, the Gucci store. We're going to squeeze that in as well. So this is one of the first articles I read uh, today. And like I said, I monitor about 35 different news sources on a daily basis. No, the Biden administration is not giving black people crack pipes and calling it racial equity. OK, hopefully somebody get this to the breakfast club. Uh, conservatives have been spreading lies about the harm reduction program. Conservatives have been spreading lies like Fox News. I was watching some of the stories from Fox News today. We need to have we need to put pressure on Fox News's uh, advertisers because there's a lot of corporations that we spend money with. And they take that and finance this propaganda on Fox News, which is doing African-Americans harm. At some point, we have to have enough self-respect to stop financing our own dehumanization, period. It's like either you're going to finance these people who encourage domestic terrorists over at Fox News, OK, and give domestic terrorists a pass. And then people like Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity and Laura Ingram. OK, either you're going to finance them or you're going to say, stop it. No, we're not going to keep buying advertising with. OK, it, it, it can't be a good. It, you can't have it both ways and say, well, you know, domestic terrorist sympathizers, they buy Coca-Cola also. Domestic terrorist sympathizers. Oh, oh the, the, the people who were at the at, at the U.S. Capitol building saying hang Mike Pence. Well, you know, they buy sneakers, too. No, damn that. No, this is this is too serious. So conservatives have been spreading lies about the harm reduction program grant that supports community based programs geared toward drug overdose prevention. However, a lot of these conservatives, like Senator Marshall Blackburn of, of Tennessee and uh, 
uh, Senator um, John Kennedy of, of Louisiana and Senator Marco Rubio, little Marco, Senator Marco Rubio of Florida, in their states, they have harm reduction programs also. Now, maybe they don't want you to know about that because they want those programs for white people to save white people's lives. So they may not want you to know about that. But let's look at this piece from uh, news1.com. And then I'm going to look at the one from the Miami Herald because the Miami Herald came out late today and it's much more recent. Okay. But this is a good start with uh in, in 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 news one they updated it and they put the time on there thank you news one 4 30 p.m february 9th i hate it when uh publications don't put the date on there and the time all this stuff so great job anoa changa for news one.com thank you very much please share this information with those dumb asses circulate misinformation on social media so the substance abuse and mental health services administration I'm sorry, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration Center for Substance Abuse Prevention released a grant application in December of 2021 uh, for organizations involved in harm reduction, for organizations involved in harm reduction. The Harm Reduction Program Grant supports community-based programs geared toward overdose prevention to keep people from dying. Geared toward overdose prevention, syringe services programs, and other harm reduction services like they have in some of these Republican states for white people to keep them from dying. But several media outlets latched onto a distortion of a federal reduction program meant to address persistent inequalities because they don't want to save black people's lives who are addicted to drugs. They only want to save white people's lives who are addicted to drugs. That's not what the article says. That's me saying it. Instead of taking a moment to do basic research on harm reduction efforts, simple Simon ass outlets ran with sensationalized headlines of the Biden administration funding crack pipes and syringes for racial equity. Crack pipes is nowhere in the 78 page grant. I went through it. Crack pipes is nowhere in there. Maybe people want to hallucinate crack pipes because they were high on crack. Crack pipes is nowhere in there. But Fox News had a field day with the Chiron, the bottom third of the screen, talking about the Biden administration giving away crack pipes and syringes and all this. And they're talking to white senators from Republican states that have uh, harm reduction programs in their states, but they don't want to talk about it. They're just making stuff up. Crack pipes. Didn't say a whole lot about opioid addiction because a whole lot of white people addicted to opioid, opioids. Didn't say a whole lot about that. This addresses opioid addiction as well. Officials for the Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, and the Office of National Drug Policy, National Drug Control Policy, sought to correct the disingenuously false narrative. Okay? No, they just lied. Okay, she, she's trying to clean it up. No, these they just lied. These people just lied. And many of them knew they were lying. But they want to get the clicks. They want to generate the hysteria on social media. They want, they want this to go viral, to elevate their social media platforms. They want to pimp people. Okay, so they lie. Quote, HHS and ONDCP are focused on using our resources smartly to reduce harm and save lives. Accordingly, no federal funding will be used directly or through subsequent reimbursement or grantees to put pipes in safe smoking kits. That's not, that's not even in there. The smoking kits are in the grant. Crack pipes are not. So how did the, the, the uh, Washington Free Beacon 
how did Fox News hallucinate crack pipes? Is it because you think crack is more associated with African Americans? And this falls in line with your right wing, right wing agenda to target African Americans and continue to build up hostility against them. HHS Secretary Xavier Becerra and Office of National Drug Policy, National Drug Control Policy Director Ralph Gupta, Ra sorry, Director Raul Gupta, said in a joint statement that was emailed to News One on Wednesday. Because News One did the right thing and they reached out to the White House. A lot of these, lot of these other people that focus on gossip and dabble in politics when there's a, a headline they can jump on, make some money off of, they didn't reach out to the White House. Quote, the goal of harm reduction is to save lives the statement continued, the administration is focused on a comprehensive strategy to stop the spread of drugs and curb addiction, including prioritizing the use of proven harm reduction strategies like providing naloxone, fentanyl test strips, and clean syringes, as well as taking decisive actions to go after violent criminals who are trafficking illicit drugs like fentanyl across our borders and into our communities. We will continue working to address the addiction and overdose epidemic and ensure that our resources are used in the smartest and most efficient manner, end quote. Now it's possible some grantees could provide safe smoking kit supplies as part of their harm reduction work. As Snopes.com noted, safe smoking kits are nestled in a sub list, sub list of 12 examples um quote equipment and supplies to en enhance harm reduction efforts but even later today clarification from the white house press Sec secretary jen Psaki: crack pipes are not part of this period crack pipes are not part of this period we'll, we'll get to that on the other side of the break some people just want to hallucinate crack pipes i think they are high on crack maybe they've been watching new jack city too much or something like that other measure, measures included medication lock boxes, safe sex kits, including condoms and, and uh, pre-op and hepatitis A and hepatitis B vaccination services. The grant announcement outlined the uses for potential funding. OK, read the rest of this article. They have the link to the grant in here. When I come back, we'll go uh, to the segment from Roland Martin Unfiltered. Also, we hear from the White House, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. Then we're going to go to this other piece here that came out later today that has more up, even more up to date information from the Miami Herald that really breaks this down. No, the Biden administration is not giving out crack pipes. Here's what's really happening. Okay. So you listen to the African History Network show on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Jeanette Davis is a well-established author with six published books. Black Survival in White America from Past History to the Next Century was published in 1995 and it delves into the history of African Americans before slavery up to contemporary times. The Great Divide Between Blacks and Whites was released in 2008 and her autobiography, Black Just Like My Mama, was published in 2010. Soulful Journey, The Business of Beings, was released in December 2021, and her two latest books, Echoes from the Heart, Love Throws Poetry, and Master Being Human, were both published in January of 2022. Jeanette Davis' writings delve deeply into the psyche of black people from ancient to contemporary times. She cuts no corners and leaves no stones unturned in relating truth, letting the chips fall where they may on both African and European doorsteps. Order Jeanette Davis' books today at Amazon.com. Search for Jeanette Davis and get to know her work today. 
STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the Future Radio. Hey, I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Wednesday, February 9th, 2022, and we are live. Calling numbers 313-778-7600. It's the call in number if you have a question or comment. 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. Okay, so um, you can still register for the online class i teach on saturdays and sundays on saturdays it's ancient kemet the moors and the ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school uh kemet one original names for egypt ancient kemet the moors and the ma'afa and this is freezing up on me ancient kemet the moors and the ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school and uh, also uh, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. So I teach these on Saturdays and Sundays. The class is on sale right now, regularly um, $130 on sale, $80. We'll post a link here. You can register for them. And it's at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All right, there we go. So th this is a 10-week online class that I teach. We deal with thousands of years of history and what leads to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. As soon as you register, you can watch the class we did this past weekend. Next class is Saturday, February 12th. And then uh, on Sunday, I teach from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. Um, and that one's uh, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on uh, Sundays, okay? Uh, we also have a bundle pack where you can uh, get both classes for only $120. It's regularly, they're regularly $130 each. And you can, you have full access to the class even after the 10-week online class is over with. So if you want to go back and watch the class a year from now, you can do that. Uh, if you've taken classes with me before, and I've been teaching these online classes since 2017, if you've taken any of my online classes that I teach previously, Email me at AHN show at African History Network dot com. You're going to get 50 percent off on the uh, on the bundle pack. All right. So email me at AHN show at African History Network dot com. All right. So let's go back to the story here. Uh, I'm glad to see uh, some outlets took down the misinformation that was floating around earlier today. And uh, hopefully I'll do more research next time. Um, you can read this uh, piece here from New York Post also. I'm going to go to the one from the Miami Herald here in just a second. Even the New York Post had to correct some misinformation that was put out Monday by the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail picked up the story from the Washington Free Beacon, okay, right-wing uh, uh, political publication, Washington Free Beacon. White House denies grant funds would let nonprofit orgs buy pipes for drug addicts, February 9th, 2022. And I'm not even a fan of New York Post, but they did a better job than some of these black news sources. Well, they ain't new. They're not even news sources. They're just social media, whatever the hell they do. Um, the Washington Free Beak. So the 75 page, yeah, 75 pages, the 75 page announcement of the Substance Abuse and Mental Services Administration's uh, uh, some uh, some uh, S A M H S A. Nearly thirty million dollars harm reduction program grant includes a list of required harm reduction activities. The money must be used for, including the purchase of equipment and supplies to enhance harm reduction efforts. Safe smoking kit supplies. The Washington Free Beacon initially reported Monday wrongly reported on Monday, citing a Department of Health and Human Services spokesperson that safe smoking kits, kit supplies included pipes used for hard drugs. However, and this is, and is the Washington Free Beacon that a lot of these sources cited, 
and it was false. However, an HHS spokesperson told the uh, New York uh, told the New York Post Wednesday that the outlets referring to the Washington Free Beacon description of the department's response was inaccurate. In their response, the Free Beacon, which uh, was which was shared, which was shared the post, which was shared with the New York Daily Post, the HHA spoke uh, the HH. HHS spokesperson did not mention pipes and said that SAMHSA does not specify the kit's elements, only the parameters. Now, the harm reduction grant is a grant program designed to help Americans who are struggling with substance use, stay healthy and safe, prevent overdose death and find pathways into evidence based treatments and find pathways into evidence-based treatments, the spokesperson added. Like all programs the, uh, that use federal funding, these grants must adhere to relevant federal, state, and local laws or regulations. All right, check out the, uh, so you can read the rest of this. The be better articles, but you can read this one here. Uh, Jen Psaki, White House press secretary at the press briefing the day because Fox News brought up the question because Fox News has been running this BS all day. Jen Psaki said it, it, it was inaccurate reporting and we wanted to put out information to make that clear. OK, uh, she said that uh, pipes were never part of the kit pipes, P-I-P-E-S, were never part of the kit. She, she, she went on to say that the kits could include alcohol swabs, lip balm, other materials to promote hygiene and reduce the transmission of diseases like HIV and hepatitis for the people who just want to hallucinate crack pipes. I would note that, that what we're really talking about here is steps that we're taking as a federal government to address to uh, to address the opioid opioid epidemic, which is killing tens of thousands, if not more, Americans every single day, week month of the year. We put out the statement, though, because there was inaccurate information out there. You got that right. All right, I want to go to this clip here from uh, Roland Martin and Filter today. And Roland dealt with this also. Uh, let's go to clip uh, one, Shakita. Okay. Uh, let's go to clip one. computer this is a press release that was sent out september 14th 2020 louisiana department of health announces award of 34.5 million dollars state opioid response response grants guess what this grant is for oh harm reduction programs yep that's what it's Four. Guess what? What does it say? With a budget of over 17 million for each of the two years, the priority population served by the grant will be under and insured, criminal justice population, tribes, pregnant women or women with infants experiencing neonatal opioid withdrawal symptoms, people who inject drugs, colleges and universities, school aged children. Do y'all realize that numerous states around America? have harm reduction programs. In fact, Mike Pence, when he was the governor of Indiana, there was an explosion of HIV cases in Indiana, and they had a syringe exchange program that curtailed the spread of HIV AIDS. Indiana, a red state. Senator Marsha Blackburn was highly critical of these programs. Do y'all know that Tennessee has a harm reduction programs. Then, of course, you got this idiot, 
Senator Marco Rubio, who put out this video because he was just overhauled by these programs. Watch this fool. The Biden administration is going to be sending crack pipes and meth pipes targeting minority communities in this country, underserved communities. I know that sounds insane. I know that sounds too crazy to be true. They confirmed it yesterday. They're going to, they call them smoking kits, and they say it's about equity. But they have, in essence, confirmed that they're going to be mailing and sending pipes that can be used to smoke crack and meth to underserved communities in America. Okay, pause it right there. It's the key we're coming up on the break. This isn't even about pause it right there. He's lying. He, he's lying, and that got dispelled today. Now, this right here, this is the uh, harm reduction program that's in effect right now in Louisiana. This is what Roland was talking about, because right before I played the clip from Roland, he played Senator John Kennedy, who was interviewed on Fox News today, talking about the harm reduction program from the federal government, but not talking about the harm reduction program that's in place Right now, in Louisiana, the Louisiana Department of Health announces award of thirty four point five million state opioid uh, response grant. Thirty four point five million. This is September 14th, 2020. Read this here because a lot of these Republicans have uh, re uh, harm reduction programs like for opioid addiction, things like that in their states targeting white people and opioid addiction. But then they want to call out a harm reduction program that's targeting underserved communities, which is largely going to be African-American. You got the same thing, uh, something very similar in Florida, where uh, Senator Marco Rubio, Rubio is. He doesn't want to talk about that. Governor Ron DeSantis signed that in the law. Uh, Governor Ron DeSantis signed that in the law in the 2019. Tell you white people's lives. Very interesting. OK, so. Now, you come on here with some more nonsense, you gonna, your dumb ass going to get blocked also. All right. You listen to the African History Network show on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Come and travel with me to a time long ago and place far away. You will experience high adventure and excitement. You are fighting alongside an ancient army in fierce battle. Feel the exhilaration of struggle and final conquest. My name is Maninkare, and I am both a prince and a priest in one of the most advanced civilizations humans have ever produced. I want you to ride with me in my chariot as I slay the barbarians who have come to invade my land. I invite you to sit at the conference table with the great pharaoh Taharqa and his ministers as they plan intrigue and use subterfuge to outmaneuver and defeat the enemy. Come back with me to the land of your ancestors, to the beautiful land of Kemet. So open the pages of this book and begin the adventure. Find out what happens in the book, Maninkare Battles the Assyrians in the Nile Valley from author Makari Jones. Get your copy today at Amazon.com. iRedify is a black-owned digital platform that showcases black and brown cultures and people. The books on the platform are written by African-American authors, Afro-Caribbean authors, African authors, and so much more. Kids 14 and under can read ebooks, listen to audiobooks, and complete learning activities. Kids can even write in the books digitally. Get unlimited access to everything on the platform for only $8.99 a month at iRedify.com. Sign up for your membership today. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation. Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Wednesday, February 9th, 2022. And we're live. Interesting we didn't get any phone calls. Find that very interesting. Okay. But it's cool. It's all right. Um, so right before the break, we were dealing breaking down more disinformation uh floating around on, on social media and, and right wing being pushed by right wing uh outlets. Um and I was showing you this article here because a lot of people come on here as trolls and they get embarrassed because they don't do research. 
Governor Ron DeSantis signs legislation authorizing needle exchange programs in Florida. This was to save white people's lives. This was in uh, June 2019. Let's go back to this clip from Roland Martin Unfiltered because uh, Senator Marco Rubio attacks the harm reduction program targeting underserved communities, but he doesn't want to talk about this program that's in Florida right now to save white people's lives. Let's go back to the clip, Shakita. This is about crazy versus normal, insane versus common sense. What does it say? Hmm. Well, my computer, here's an article from 2019. Governor Ron DeSantis signs legislation authorizing needle exchange program in Florida. That's a harm reduction program. Yep, sure is. That's what it is in Florida, where Senator Marco Rubio is United States Senator. See, this is the right wing on how they're constantly driving a narrative, okay, based upon this free beacon story. This is what came up, the question came up today in the White House briefing, mm -hmm. and Press Secretary Jen Psaki answered the question from Fox News. Thanks, Jen. Um, State just put out a statement clarifying um, around some reports uh, that crack pipes are not going to be part of the safe smoking kits that are funded by mm -hmm. the administration. Um, but can you clarify for us, were they never a part of the kit, or were they removed in response to the reporting and the pushback? They were they never a part of the kit. It was inaccurate reporting, and we wanted to put out information to make that clear. Try to what tell is you. in the safe smoking kit? Uh, a safe smoking skin may contain alcohol swabs, lip balm, other materials to promote hygiene and reduce the transmission of diseases like HIV and hepatitis. I would note that what we're really talking about here is steps that we're taking as a federal government to address the opioid epidemic, which is killing uh, tens of thousands, if not more, Americans uh, every single day, week, month of the year. Uh, we put out this statement, though, because there was inaccurate information out there. Or I should say HHS put out the statement because there was inaccurate information out there. And we wanted to provide clarification on the allowable uses for the HHS harm reduction program. It's not a change in policy. Uh, this program, though, is focused on harm reduction strategies, including prioritizing the use of fentanyl test strips and clean syringes. And all of these harm reduction services uh, that will be supported by these programs are, are intended to save lives from an epidemic that we know is uh, is devastating to communities across the country. And now, uh, y'all know uh, Reese Colbert. She, right, don't, pause mince, right there, she don't mince words on the pause show. Pause right there, Shakita. Yeah, well, Reese cusses a lot, so we can't play that on the air. <laughs> I thought to Reese earlier today because Reese put out a Reese put out a she put out a, a short video uh, Tuesday night on Black Women's Views, and I saw it. And we were talking back and forth on Instagram today. So she's a panelist on Roland Martin Unfiltered on Thursdays. I'm a panelist each Friday on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Let's go to, let's go to, uh, hold on. Was I able to pull this up? I want to show you what they have in Tennessee because Senator Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee Republican, the, uh, she was on, I think she was on Fox News today because I saw a video of her. I think it was on Fox News. And she was running her mouth about this nonsense. She posted about this on Twitter, all this nonsense, right? Look at what they have in Tennessee. This is why people really need to do more research before they post and repost just nonsense, okay? If politics isn't your thing, just stay in your own lane, seriously. But, uh, look at this right here. This is from... Let's pull this up. Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. Depart Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. This is uh, the state where Marsha Blackburn is a senator. Well, she's, she's a U.S. senator from Tennessee. She represents Tennessee. Regional Overdose Prevention Specialists. This is what they have in Tennessee, regional overdose prevention specialists. Regional overdose prevention specialists are, are located throughout the state of Tennessee as a point of contact for training and education on opioid overdose and for overdose prevention through the distribution of naloxone. 
Now, the majority, not exclusively, not 100%, but the majority of the people who suffer for, from opioid addiction, as well as opioid overdoses, which means they, meaning they die. I mean, they can overdose and survive, but it's, it's going to be tough. But the majority of people who are on opioids and majority of people dying from opioid addictions are who? Even though African-Americans are increasingly negatively impacted by opioids like George Floyd, it's largely white people. This is what they have in Tennessee. Marsha Blackburn, why don't you mention this? Regional overdose prevention specialists are located throughout the state of Tennessee as a prior, as a point of contact for training and education on opioid overdose and for overdose prevention through the dis distribution of naloxone because they want to save white people's lives. From October 2017 through June 2021, the ROPS distributed more than 206,000 units of naloxone, naloxone and TDM HSAS has documented at least 200 and check this out documented at least 20 at least 26,000 lives saved because of naloxone distributed during that time from October 2017 to June 2021 they documented 26,000 lives saved not in the US but just in Tennessee this is dealing with opioid addiction. I guarantee the majority of the people's lives, they say, were white. But now when it comes to harm reduction, that's going to target underserved populations, largely African-Americans. Now people want, now people like Senator Marsha Blackburn want to cry and, and run with these made up stories of crack pipes. But you've got this in your, in your state, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the volunteer state of Tennessee saving white people's lives. Lil Marco has this in, in the state of, of uh, uh, Florida, okay, that Jackie Robinson was ran out of and, and, uh, and um, Trayvon Martin was killed in. In August 27, 1960, you had Axe Handle Sunday, Axe Handle Saturday, Axe Handle Saturday, where the Ku Klux Klan beat African Americans sitting in at lunch counters, just trying to be treated like human beings. They were beaten with ax handles and baseball bats. You got this right now in the good old state of Florida to save white people's lives. Governor Ron DeSantis signs legislation authorizing needle exchange programs in Florida. This is from June 27, 2019. We're going to continue this on the other side of the break because we're going to get to this piece here from um, uh, the Miami Herald that came out late today because I got an update from the Miami Herald. We'll talk about this. Okay, you listen to the African History Network show. Hey, we're out of time here. 9, 10 a.m. Superstate. Right now, it's correct. Wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. Stand by. Okay, let's look at this here. How's everybody doing? Now, so what you should, when you see these senators, especially these Republican senators, in the media talking, especially on Fox News, and you see clips. This is why you should watch Roland Martin and Filter. Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Definitely watch Friday on Friday because I'm on on Friday. Write down the names of these Republican senators. Because they're voting on issues that you say you care about. Usually they vote no. So if we look at this here from um, the Miami Herald, hold on, let me correct this, hit the wrong button. Everybody all right? Hopefully you're taking notes. Uh, this came out today, 6.39 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. No Biden administration is not giving up, giving out crack pipes. Here's what's really happening. This is by uh, Julia Marnin for the Miami Herald. 
She said, if you've been browsing through social media and keeping up with current events, you might have seen headlines suggesting the Biden administration is handing out free crack pipes. I think some of the people who wrote those stories are high or get high. No, the White House is not doing so and has shot down these reports. Here's what's actually going on. A number of media outlets reported the White House is providing pipes to people addicted to drugs to smoke illicit substances such as crack cocaine. This comes after the Department of Health and Human Services unveiled a new grant program in December of 2021 geared towards substance abuse and overdose prevention that would include funding for harm reduction strategies such as safe smoking kits supplies, safe smoking kits slash supplies. These comments are misleading. So HHS spokesperson and HHS spokes for Health and Human Services spokesperson told McClatchy News, which is a news outlet, McClatchy News, these comments are misleading and misinformed. These comments are misleading and misinformed. Now, some people don't care. They're just going to put out misinformation anyway to elevate their little pitiful social media platforms and pimp people for money, generate money however they can. Because they don't really, some people don't care. HHS spokesperson told McClatchy News in a statement about the crack pipe claims that have sparked some outrage online. The program is meant to support community based overdose prevention programs, syringe services programs, and other harm reduction services. Okay, now just so people understand, programs like this have existed for like the last 30, 40 years, going back to like the late 70s, early 80s. The program is meant to support community based overdose prevention programs syringe services programs and other harm reduction services according to the substance abuse and mental health services administration a branch of hhs that is in charge of the grant program it's authorized under president joe biden's 1.9 trillion dollar american rescue plan that no republicans voted for in the house or the senate the american rescue plan okay that also included the child tax credit it also included $46.5 billion for rental assistance, rental assistance and assistance for landlords. It also included another round of loans for small businesses, the PPP loans. It included uh, funding for schools to pay for increased ventilation so schools could open back up and not have to be shut down. That's all in the $1.9 trillion dollar American rescue plan that no Republicans in the House or the Senate voted for. That bill, uh, that bill passed in early March is about March 6th, 2021, when the American rescue plan was passed and signed into law. Quote, no federal funding will be used directly or through subsequent reimbursement of grantees to put pipes in safe smoking kits. HHS, HHS Secretary Xavier Becerra, Xavier Becerra, uh, and in the Office of National Drug Control Policy Director, Dr. Raul Gupta, said in, in a statement February 9th, 2022, the goal of harm reduction is to save lives. Just like the program in Tennessee was Senator Marsha Blackburn is, Republican. And it saved 26,000 lives from like 2017 to 2021. And that's dealing with opioid addiction. So it largely, mostly, most likely saved a lot of white people's lives. The agency said the funding is going to enhance overdose and other types of prevention activities to help control the spread of infectious diseases and the consequences of such diseases for individuals with or at risk of developing substance use disorders, substance use disorders. Now, a day before Xavier Becerra's uh, statement, uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services, Xavier Becerra, a day before Becerra's statement, 
news suggesting the false claims spread rapidly and unleashed waves of criticism from conservatives, including Republican Senator Marco Rubio, little line ass Marco of Florida, who wrote that President Joe Biden, quote, is sending free meth and crack pipes to minority communities in the name of racial equity. February 8th on Twitter, would it make you feel better if he sent crack pipes and meth pipes to white communities? Little Marco, would that make you feel better? This led the White House di uh, directly address, this led to the White House directly addressing the media claims with White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki today at the White House press briefing, addressing it, calling it inaccurate reporting. We played that clip for you already. You can go to whitehouse.gov and watch the White House. You can watch the, uh, on YouTube, you can watch the White House press briefings on YouTube at White House, the White House YouTube channel. Also on uh, C-SPAN should have it as well. Crack pipes for all y'all that keep want to hallucinate a reality that doesn't exist. Crack pipes were never a part of the safe smoking kits mentioned in the HHS, HHS grant. Jen Psaki said at the February 9th news conference, we wanted to put out information to make that clear. So hopefully after all the smoke clears from people who are smoking medicinal marijuana and all this stuff, they'll go back and correct this misinformation they've been putting out. When asked what the safe smoking kits would specifically include, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said, they quote, may contain alcohol swabs, lip balm, other materials to promote hygiene and reduce the transmission of diseases like HIV and hepatitis, end quote. Jen Psaki said that the grant program is one of the steps the Biden administration is taking to address opioid epide the opioid epidemic, which is killing tens of thousands, if not more Americans every single day, week, month of this year. She added that HHS, HHS put out the February 9th statement because of the inaccurate information out there. Now, the grant funds can be used to support harm reduction efforts such as medication lockboxes, Food and Drug Administration overdose reversal medication, substance test kits such as fentanyl test strips and syringes to prevent uh and syringes to prevent and control the spread of infectious diseases, according to the grant. There's a link to the grant in here. Um, the anticipated total funding is up to $9.7 million per year or $29,250,000 over three years, according to uh, SAMHSA. An HHS spokesperson told McClatchy News, too many Americans have lost their lives to drug overdose. Evidence-based community harm reduction services such as nalox uh, uh, nal naloxone, fentanyl strips, and syringe services programs help people stay alive, help people stay alive, and are proven strategies for addressing this tragic epidemic. Is anybody focused on getting any of these contracts? Is anybody focused on writing these grants and getting any of this money? The harm reduction grant program offered by the Substance Abuse and Mental Services Administration is designed to put these services within reach for Americans who are struggling with substance use so they can stay healthy and safe, avoid overdose death to save people's lives, avoid overdose death and find pathways into evidence-based treatments. All to do for self people. 
is anybody going to plot for these grants to get this money to save black people's lives or to do for self people? You anybody going to get this money? In November of 2021, the country's first overdose prevention centers, supervised injection facilities, opened in New York City to address the opioid crisis, McClatchy News reported. There were roughly 100,300 fatal drug overdoses nationwide during a 12 month period ending April 2021. This rough over a 12 month period from so you're going from April 2020 or maybe May 2020 to April 2021. 100,300 fatal mean they that means they died 100,300 fatal drug overdoses. Now all the people that put this simple Simon ass nonsense out here and had to take stuff down. Are they going to put information out here talking about this and how to save the lives of African Americans who are addicted to drugs. Now, out of this hundred thousand, I don't know how many were African Americans, but I know we're thirteen percent of the population. So, it's a good chance that at least thirteen thousand of those. Um, it's a good chance at least thirteen thousand were African Americans. If you are a loved one, show signs of substance use disorder. You can seek help by calling the national hotline 1-800-662-4357, 1-800-662-4357, or find treatment using uh, SAM HSA's online locator. So hopefully the people that put this misinformation out will put out the phone number to, for people like who suffer from substance abuse, like to actually get help. But that's provided that you actually care about the people that you provide information for. There were roughly 100,300 fatal drug overdoses. That's not talking about the people that OD and had to be hospitalized but survived. That's talking about the ones that didn't make it over a 12-month period of time. All right, so check out this article here from, um, it's a really good one. This came out later today from the Miami Herald. So I got an update from them. I said I'm going to talk about this one today. I'm going to talk about this article today. No, Biden administration is not giving out crack pipes. Here's what's really happening. February 9th, 2022, Julia Marnin. Good reporting from Julia Marnin for uh, the Miami Herald. All right, I want to go to this next story here. This deals with Jim Jones. I posted about this. Uh, I posted about this earlier today. So, I and let's go to let's go to my post here on uh, on my Facebook fan page, the African History Network. Now, I'm not going to play the video because he has he was doing a lot of cursing in the video. Well, I can play the audio of the video because we're off nine ten a.m. See, that's nine ten a.m. is FCC regulated radio, so. Um, I'm limited with, you know, I'm not complaining, but certain things I can't play on the air there. That's, uh, that's FCC regulated radio. We, we could get fined. Um, let me go to this. So here is what, um, Angela, I saw this post from Angela Yee from the breakfast club on, um, on a Facebook page and I shared it on my page. And let me see, let's close this out here. All right, that's Sade. Okay, this right here. So this is Jim Jones at the Gucci store. And I found out a lot about Gucci because I don't wear Gucci, I don't buy Gucci. 
I don't even like the name, tell you the truth. Um, sounds like something else. Um, I didn't know Gucci had a VIP section. But he posted about discrimination, okay, at uh, the Gucci store. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to play... Uh, I'm going to play what he said, then we'll go to the comment. Then we'll go to my comments here, okay? So let's let's go to this clip here. We've been in Gucci for about an hour. Okay. We've been in Gucci for about an hour, right? Now we're in Gucci in the VIP. Like two hours. Right? Since we came in here having nobody came and showed us no courtesy, no amenities, no nothing. Period. Not even a drink of water. I to speak to manager. Send me a black guy out here to start telling me some bullshit. So they got the black guy racial profiling on black people. I to speak to manager bigger than him. Everybody disappeared. Ain't nobody come out yet. I still ain't getting I still ain't getting no sparkling water. I still ain't getting no champagne. I still ain't getting nothing. On, I didn't there, have a salesperson inside of my VIP suite the whole time I was there. I had to keep screaming for VIP people to help me out. But everybody don't know where the real manager is. Well, wow. it's it's time. I'm tired of this. I'm spending all this money as entertainers inside these stores. They hire these black people, and these black people are more racist than white people when they get their job inside of Gucci. All of a sudden, you, you stop playing with us, bro. Still haven't seen a manager yet. Still haven't seen the manager yet. Since I'm talking to you right now, the manager still hasn't popped out of Gucci. And the bill is like 29000 but we didn't pay that yet. You heard? Why would we? They still haven't sent a manager or bottle of sparkling water or anything that says that we appreciate your service for being in here in Gucci and spending that bag. The big one. The big one. They sent this guy. What is he possibly going to do? <laughs> what is he gonna do? Is what I wanna know. Still haven't seen a man. Is there a manager that works here or everybody just a worker? Okay. So uh <laughs> I ain't know Gucci had a VIP section. Oh, I don't even know what Gucci story is. I don't wear Gucci, don't want to. I, because when he said VIP sex, I'm like, okay, is it, does Gucci have a club that I don't know about? Is Gucci like a nightclub or what? Okay, so he's at the Gucci store. And in uh, reading the article, reading different articles about this, he uh, he said he spent about $100,000 over three months at the Gucci store. Okay, so he, here's what I posted on, uh, on Facebook. Uh, let, me, let me increase the size of this. Here's that post. So I said, I have mixed feelings about this. Okay. Now, of course, he should not have been mistreated. He and his entourage, he and his group. Of course, they should not have been mistreated. But but here's what I said. So I have mixed feelings on this situation. Number one, no hip-hop artist Jim Jones, from, and he's on Love and Hip Hop. Um, no Jim Jones should not have been mistreated like this or any African-American for that matter. Let me see if I can book this here, pull this up here, or any African-American for that matter. Two, why are we asking Gucci to take our money? Why are we asking Gucci to take our money when they obviously don't want it because that's how they think of us. Why are we asking Gucci to take our money when they obviously don't want it because that's how they think of us? Now, in, in looking at other social, looking at other, he put some other videos on his Instagram page. He went to another high-end store. They were treated well. He spent a lot of money there, okay? Do we own any Gucci outlets? Do we, I mean, we have to become more, we have to become more strategic consumers. It's good that he's blessed and he can drop a hundred thousand dollars in three months on some Gucci and all this stuff. We have to become smarter consumers. 
I, I asked the question, do you remember the blackface sweater that Gucci was selling for $890 in uh, 2019? And they had to pull, it was in February 2019 that they had to pull the Gucci blackface sweater because of protests. I said, it's good that Jim Jones made his, uh, uh, made this video to put Gucci on blast, but we should redirect our dollars toward African-American owned brands or at least white owned companies that would treat us with respect. R E S P E C T respect is more than just a song by the queen of soul. Then I put below it. Now this is from uh shopblack.us a list of black owned luxury brands to support in, instead of Gucci and Prada. And this they put out in 2019 when you had the uh, protest over uh, a protest over Gucci and Prada, and you had the protests um, regarding. And let me let me see. Let me close this out here. I want to flip. Uh, one was dealing with Gucci and the blackface, um, the blackface sweater Gucci had. Okay, and I'll pull up an article on that in just a second here. So this is from Shop Black. Shop Black has some really good uh, articles here and some lists. S-H-O-P-P-E, Black, shopblack.us. Black-owned luxury brands to support instead of Gucci. Still don't, I still don't understand what the fascination with Gucci is, but okay. Black-owned luxury brands to support instead of Gucci and Prada. February 9th, 2019. Years after the Gucci and Prada debacle, apologies have been made as well as attempts to win back consumer trust. No matter, now this is from 2019, no, no matter the motive behind these gestures, the fact remains that there are too many Black-owned luxury brands that offer great products for us to keep supporting the same brands religiously. So then they go through and they, and they show some uh, African-American-owned luxury brands that we can go and drop $29,000 on also. Brother Veli's, uh, Ashia. Wear Brims, W-E-A-R-B-I-B-R-I-M-S, Wear Brims, Wales Bonner, Francis Gray, Zaff, Z-A-F-F, Tory Sudan, S-O-U-D-A-N, Mifflin, M-I-F-L-A-N-D, Andrew Iyama, House of Takura, Uh, Mitra, M-I-I-T-R-A, and that's uh, Tasami, uh, T-S-E-M-A-Y-E, B-I-N-I-T-E, Suave Eyewear, S-W-A-V, Oswald Boating, Linnell Ellis, T. Michael, Andra Celeste, Made Made Leather Company, M-A-D-E, Fourth and Avery. So if you just want to ball out of control, you can do that with black owned businesses. We can empower our own people. If you just you just got you got 29,000 burden a hole in your pocket, 30,000, 50,000, you just gotta just go crazy. You know, you can support African American owned businesses and go crazy. Black owned luxury brands to support instead of Gucci and Prada. As, a, as I said before, we have to stop financing our own dehumanization. At some point, we have to say, wait a second. Okay, now, uh, no, they shouldn't mistreat us, but 
why we keep taking our asses up in there? But at some point, you guys say, well, hold on. Let's see. You know, it, it, see, same thing happened. I remember there was, um, the, in New, I think it was New York City, there was this Chinese store and it was some African American, uh, I think it was a Chinese nail salon, Chinese nail salon in New York City. It was a few years ago. And uh, it's two African American women. They got into an argument with the person doing the nails or something, and, and they were assaulted. So African Americans started protesting outside of the store. And I knew one of the people who was an activist who was protesting outside of the store. And they wanted to shut the store down. I sent them, I, I sent her a article from Black Enterprise magazine that talked about um, 10 nail salons or maybe 11 in New York, this one right here, this is what I sent her. Because see, I come from a different school. I ain't in that, all that uh, outside, and, okay, we're gonna protest and, and we're gonna shut this store down. We're gonna shut this store down. No, you got, you got African-Americans going into that store to shop and you got people walking by, you need to have flyers of black owned nail salons to redirect them to, to redirect those dollars, to send them to our own businesses. Stand by, we're back. It was freezing up on me. I gotta get a new laptop. This laptop overheats and shuts down. This is the worst laptop I've ever had. This is a Dell. What is this? Inspiron 15 5000. This thing overheats and it shuts down. Uh, okay, so what happened was so they're not protesting outside of this Chinese nail salon. I know the activists outside protesting. I said, I'm going to send you this because they, they, they were, they had flyers they telling the African-Americans don't shop there, but they weren't redirecting them to black owned nail salons. No, you got to redirect that energy. It's not enough just to stand in front of stores protesting, trying to shut them down. Okay. Re give them uh, uh, flyers with the names of African-American owned stores as an alternative, redirect that energy and those dollars to African-American owned stores. So I sent her this article here. She made copies of it, gave it out to the people. And after about, it was either 30, 60 days, something like that, the, uh, the Chinese store shut down. So this one right here, where are we? This is uh, okay. This one right here is okay from Black Enterprise, and the name of this 11 black owned nail salons in New York you can support. This is from um. August 7th, 2018. Okay, so they go through and list all these uh, nail salons. Black, hopefully now, I know some of, some of them are not in business now, but some of them are still in business. But we have, to, we have to be smarter. It's not enough just to stand in front of stores protesting. I'll redirect that energy. Redirect that energy and those dollars to our own businesses. Okay, lastly, this is laptop is acting up on this is acting up here. Lastly, uh, there was this article I was looking at. Okay, so dealing with Jim Jones, there's one piece from uh, Complex, complex.com on Jim Jones, dealing with the Gucci incident. Then there was um, this one here also from Hip Hop DX. Jim Jones slams Gucci. Racial profiling. There we go. 
Okay, Jim Jones slams Gucci store for racial profiling after decrying 2019 Gucci boycott. Because what happened was, okay, so this article is from February 9th, 2022. Because what happened when African Americans were boycotting Gucci back in 2019, Jim Jones was against the boycott. Okay, when African Americans were boycotting Gucci back in 2019, Jim Jones was against the boycott. So uh, Gucci already has a questionable reputation within the rap community. Uh, in 2019, an informal ban on the luxury brand was put in place after it released an $890 wool balaclava jumper that looks strikingly close to blackface a form of theatrical makeup used predominantly predominantly by white performers to portray a caricature caricature of uh african americans even soldier boy who's responsible for the 2008 gucci bandana blasted the brand at the time saying f gucci gucci canceled okay but uh now jim jones has a bone to pick with gucci as well years after declaring he didn't give a damn what people thought about him rocking uh him for rocking the brand gucci okay so read this here uh as well all right this is from hip-hop dx jim jones slams gucci store for racial profiling after decrying 2019 gucci boycott this is from hiphopdx.com all right look we have to get out of here remember the african uh oh you can support us uh dollar sign the ahn show through cash app dollar sign the ahn show through cash app also through paypal paypal.me forward slash the ahn show paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Uh, and we have the information at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com also. Uh, we are six days a week. The substance keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting, uh, pay some of the bills, pay for all these services I have to use to broadcast and run the African History Network. Uh, and right on the homepage of our website, we have the information uh, as well. This is our official Cash App account, dollar sign, the AHN show. So when you go to it, it'll say Michael and show my picture there. And uh, dollar sign, the AHN show. We have the link here on our website. These other ones here are fake African History Network Cash App accounts. We also have the um, button there for uh, PayPal. You can register for the online classes that I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. You can even use these classes with your children. I would say this information is PG-13. Um, ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. Who still, who still needs to register for these online classes? As soon as you register, you can start watching the content. You can watch the class we just did uh, this past weekend. We had a great uh, we had a great class this past weekend. Also, we just the class just started up. We do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch them anytime. So I'm going to post a link here. The class is on sale. Eighty dollars, regularly one hundred thirty dollars. Uh, even after the class is over with, you can still watch the uh, you still have access to the full class. You can still watch it. You can watch from around the world. And then uh, on Saturdays, I teach from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. So both of these classes, and these classes are 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, both days. I uh, do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, video clips. You don't have to be present in class. During class, you can see me. I can't see you. Um we also have a bundle pack where you, you can register for both classes for only $120. They're regularly $130 each. If you've taken any of my online classes with me before, email me at ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com 
and you'll get a 50% discount. Okay, email me at AHN show at African History Network.com. We'll enroll you in the class at a 50% discount. You get 50% off the bundle pack, so it'll only be $60 for you. Okay, I'm gonna post the link here again. Here, this is the link here for um of the bundle pack. We have the information at our website, African History Network.com, also. And you can join us in class this weekend. All right, we have to get out of here. Um, we're here Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight, and Sunday, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And let me post this here. So remember, uh, follow us on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I M H O T E P. Turn on live notifications so you know when we go live on Facebook and YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. Michael M. Hotep on Instagram, I-M-H-O-T-E-P, and uh, The A-H-N Show on Twitter. Remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. The work that I do is larger than the fashion industry, it's larger than the art world. And I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre, I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. What does self-care mean to you? To us, it's an opportunity to reconnect with nature. A chance to create something remarkable. At Sage and Elm Apothecary, our handcrafted skin care and household products immerse you in Earth's sweetest nectar, connecting you to nature in a way you never imagined. See for yourself and visit us at sageandelmapothecary.com. Jeanette Davis is a well-established author with six published books. Black Survival in White America from Past History to the Next Century was published in 1995 and it delves into the history of African Americans before slavery up to contemporary times. The Great Divide Between Blacks and Whites was released in 2008 and her autobiography, Black Just Like My Mama, was published in 2010. Soulful Journey, the Business of Beings was released in December 2021 and her two latest books, Echoes from the Heart, Love Throws Poetry, and Master Being Human were both published in January of 2022. Jeanette Davis' writings delve deeply into the psyche of black people from ancient to contemporary times. She cuts no corners and leaves no stones unturned in relating truth, letting the chips fall where they may on both African and European doorsteps. Order Jeanette Davis's books today at Amazon.com. Search for Jeanette Davis and get to know her work today. STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. The 
the work that I do is larger than the fashion industry. It's larger than the art world. And I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre. I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. iRedify is a black-owned digital platform that showcases black and brown cultures and people. The books on the platform are written by African-American authors, Afro-Caribbean authors, African authors, and so much more. Kids 14 and under can read eBooks, listen to audiobooks, and complete learning activities. Kids can even write in the books digitally. Get unlimited access to everything on the platform for only $8.99 a month at iRedify.com. Sign up for your membership today. Abundant Capital Group is a real estate investment company with over 20 years of experience in real estate. They specialize in two areas of real estate. One, they solve real estate problems with creative financing solutions that give the seller the most money for their property. And two, they show individuals how to get a higher rate of return on their investment capital with real estate note investing. If you are looking to sell or need to sell your property, here is what they provide. Market value offer, even if you have little or no equity, they typically pay all closing costs, which can be thousands of dollars. They close on a date of the seller's choosing and the seller does not have to be out of the house at the time of closing. They take the property in an as is condition and the seller is not required to make any repairs. Give them a call or email them today for a free consultation and see how they can help you with your real estate needs. Call them at 973-475-8488. That's 973-475-8488. Visit their website, AbundantCapitalGroup.com. That's AbundantCapitalGroup.com. And email them at ACG at AbundantCapitalGroup.com. Follow them on Instagram and Facebook at Abundant Capital Group. What does self-care mean to you? To us, it's an opportunity to reconnect with nature. A chance to create something remarkable. At Sage and Elm Apothecary, our handcrafted skin care and household products immerse you in Earth's sweetest nectar, connecting you to nature in a way you never imagined. See for yourself and visit us at sageandelmapothecary.com. Mental health and well-being have long been a taboo subject in the so-called African-American community. So I enlisted the help of mental health experts, thought leaders, and activists to help kill the ghost of Willie Lynch and heal from post-traumatic slave syndrome. We experience trauma a lot of times um, on a subconscious level. So sometimes something happens to us and we know that it's traumatizing, but we don't really recognize the extent of the trauma. Soul in Motion, celebrating 38 years in the arts. This energetic ensemble of dancers and drummers was started by percussionist Michael Friend and is led by choreographer, associate director, Pam Lassiter. Based in the Washington, D.C. area, Soul in Motion is now accepting bookings for Black History Month, Juneteenth, and summer festivals in 2022. Soul in Motion is also available for more intimate events, like naming ceremonies and weddings. 
To find out more or book your date, call 240-452-1349 or send an email to info at soulinmotion.org. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Soul in Motion, celebrating our history, our culture, our future. Soul in Motion, theater, African dance, and drumming since 1984.